Okay, everyone, welcome back to Brazil Efrat here at Chira David Bo Hashem. Another beautiful, beautiful morning. It's almost our Pesach, Mamish. We feel it, right? You feel the Cheirus? The, the Cheirut, right? We feel the, the freedom, right? Well, nothing helps free us all the time. Always it helps free us. <laughs> so, Baruch Hashem, we're in the middle of, uh, we're learning Lekutei uh, Halachas, Hilchas Tefillin. We're in Halacha uh, Beis, and we're in the middle of letter Gimel. Okay, we're in the middle of letter Gimel, and therefore we're up to the part where it says, uh, uh, here, Vike Kedushasam Ayudei Haksav. That we left off, Sasha? Yeah, that's what we left off, right? Okay, the main, the main Kedusha of the Tefillin is the ksav, ksav, when you write it, the writing, <coughs> the writing on the parchment, right? We had a, we had a, we had a, a, um, a Baruch Hashem, we had a Achnasa Sefer Torah last week, so those that have got to write a thing, you can understand, appreciate the cloth and the, 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 the parchment and the joy, the ink and the quill, right? It's, it's, it's so special. But it's the ksav. Ki oises ha-ksav, heim bechines oises ha because the words, the, the letters that are written is, is an aspect of the spoken word. Right? Spoken. You can, when you write something, then I can read it, I can say it. Right? Because once a person has something in their mind, I don't know, I don't know what's in your mind. But if you write it down for me, then I can read what you wrote. Right? We understand it, right? Shall Yodam this Gala or Nakuda? That's where the Ara Nakuda is in this Gala. That Ara Nakuda that we keep talking about, that the little the little knot on the tefillin is the Ara Nakuda from the Malupim. The the Malupim we said is the Vav with the dot, the vowel, the vowel. The, he, in, in, in the alphabet, we have the, one of the vowels is called Malupim. Yeah, yeah. We don't we don't use it too much, but it's a Vav with the dot. So we said that the little dot is that Ara Nakuda, and the Vav is the people, the Tzaddik is the Ara Nakuda, and he is giving out to the people. Unbelievable ideas. And this, this whole idea, this whole idea of the Ara Nakuda, the Chinas Pi Yadaber Chachmais, right? Pi Yadaber Chachmais. We said the mouth will then be able to speak Chachma, right? Because the mouth is what? Malchus. Malchus is Peh. Malchus is Peh, right? So Malchus is pe, and the Malchus can speak chachmas, pia daber chachmas, chachma, right? Connected back to my to my chachma, right in my mind, the chachma, right? You have chachma bina das, right? And that brings me down to the zer anpin, which gives me chesed gevura tves. That's a chayy yisoid. Malchus is all encompassing. It goes back to chachma, right? Pia daber chachmas. Okay, it's a little bit complicated, but it's it's really not. But here's the main, here's a, here's a, a very, very important part. Ki tefillin heim bechines uvda. Because tefillin is an aspect of working. Asiya, doing things, working. Right, you have to work the tefillin, right? It's a lot, a lot of work to make the tefillin. Right, it's a lot, a lot of work. They have to get this skin. And then they have to start the, 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 in the tannery process. Right, to tan it and to, to work the skin. It's a lot, a lot of work to make it. To make it something so beautiful the way it is, right? It's not easy. Mm-hmm. The sham, in what in the tefillin, tzrichin lekabel bechinas hanekuda beuvda. We have to get that or nekuda in the work itself, in the work itself. What what does that mean? What does that mean? The hainu ayedei ayedei oisiyosaksav through the letters that were written. What are we talking about here? Let's think. Let's let's talk it out a little bit. We're talking that a little bit. So when you have the leather, the leather, right? This the the hide, the skin. You don't see any beauty in that, right? There's no beauty in that, right? It's just it smells. It's a, uh, it's uh, not something pretty at all. But once you work on it, and you work it and work it and work it. Then it becomes something very nice, right? Not only that, it even has a nice smell to it, right? Leather, nice leather, good, good quality leather, even has a good smell to it, right? Yeah, great smell. Right? If you have a good, a good piece of leather, when it was really worked, really, really worked, and worked and worked and finished, and they worked on the finishing, then it becomes special. That's the Aranakuda. 
That's the that's the point that you're trying to bring out. That that nice aroma, that beauty of the thing is the aranakuda. Because it's all that stuff, but it's only the beauty that's the point. You understand? Mm-hmm. You can have a piece of cloth, right? You have a cloth, and it's empty, there's nothing there. When you write on it, the words, and I could read the word, wow, that's the oh, that's the aranakuda. The words. That's the aranakuda. The words on the cloth. <clears throat> yeah. Words on a cloth, not on a paper, on, but on a cloth. Then they, yeah, we're, we're talking about tefillin. Yeah, yeah. It could be on paper also, if you're writing Divrei Torah, right? Yeah. If you're writing Divrei Torah on a paper, that also. But here we're talking about in the context of tefillin. Yeah. That's why if you're, if you're writing notes, let's say you're, you're learning, and you're writing notes, you're not going to throw those notes out, right? Mm-hmm. If you have to discard them, you'll put them in shame, right? You're not going to throw them out, right? Kamesh HaMekablin, as or Anikuda Bebechinas Melula, Dibor. Melula is Dibor. Melula is Dibor. Dibor. I can be Mekabal. So that is the same way when I speak to somebody, you speak to somebody, right? Remember, Rabbi Nachman said you have to, if you want people to hear you when you speak, you have to employ, implore Chachma. If you put Chachma in your words, people will then listen to you, right? So here, the same idea that we're saying over here. If you have the R in the Kuda, which is the great, which is coming from the point of Chachma, Right, the highest place. It's coming from the highest place. <coughs> but it, it manifests itself in the way of Dibor, Melula. Dibor. It manifests itself. And I know what you're talking about. I understand what the situation is. Sha'al Yadeya Aisha Sadibar, through the words, Shal Taira, Utfila, Vira Shimayim, Kimaisham. So the same way when a person speaks, and that's what we said that's so important, that every day we speak to the Rabbi Nishlam in our own words. That's the Isbodadut. It's also so important to Mekabal Dain Min Dain. I have to speak to another Yid. Because every single day, every Jew has this R and Akuda that comes to him that day. We said that's the feeling that you have that day. Every day you have a different feeling. All right, is that true? You wake up in the morning, you feel something different. You know, maybe you know what it is. Yeah. But, but it feels something, you feel different about something you don't know. But here we're learning how to tap into that feeling how to tap into that feeling in the morning to use it to guide you in your avodat Hashem. You understand? That's what we're learning over here. So that's this whole idea of the tefillin. And it's the whole point of using the skin. Why again Chazal told us, that, and why is it that the Torah demands upon us to make the tefillin out of leather? To teach us that we have to work, we have to work on ourselves. We have to work ourselves. When we work on ourselves, we make ourselves more beautiful. We make ourselves more, more desirable when we work on ourselves. It's about working on ourselves, not always feeling good. You know, I, I, you know I, I, need, I need to go for all the desires and all of the things. It's not that. I have to work on myself. And when I work on myself, then I feel good. That's really feeling good. Why? Because then you did something good. Otherwise, when you give in to the desires... So then the Yetzirah comes back to the person right away and says, ha ha, and look what you just did. <laughs> look what you just did. <laughs> so then do you really enjoy it? They asked the Baal Shem Tov, you know, I don't know, Rabbi, since you came in the world, what changed? You know, everyone, was, was Jews before were putting on tefillin, Jews were putting on, they were wearing their talis, they were learning Torah. What did you change? So the Baal Shem Tov said, I changed one thing. From now on, any Jew that doesn't have very, will never enjoy it. He'll never enjoy the Aveira because he's going to have so much aggravation after he does his Aveira, he won't enjoy it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Have that guilt, that guilt that he'll feel, right? That aggravation of that guilt that he feels, right? It'll cause him such an anxiety that he won't, he won't, it won't do any, any good. So he'll realize, said the Bashan, he'll realize that it's not a good way. It's but, funny because normally the is uh, so associated with with uh, bringing the good points. Yeah, it is. Yeah. No, no, no. No, it is. No, no. It, is, it is, but but yeah. It, but, no, but they asked him so this so he, because then he, so so no, so what happens today? They go to the psychologist, psychiatrist. They give them medication. They give them drugs. So they shouldn't feel that. So they, didn't, shouldn't, so they shouldn't feel this. I can go on happy, go lucky, doing whatever I want to do, right? That's why it makes all sense, right? Why do they keep going to the psychiatrist? 
psychologists. Why, why are they doing that for? Because they don't want to work on themselves. They don't want to work on themselves. And they have this thing that's nagging at them inside all the time. And they don't know what it is. It's driving them crazy. So they go to different vices, right? This one turns to alcohol. This one needs uh, uh, marijuana. This one needs, right? Everyone's talking about marijuana today, right? Oh, oh, it's legal. And they, why? Where did this come from? To bypass, yeah. Just to, to not to connect to the uh, Avaida, like we're learning here, the Tzvila, and not to work on it, to reveal that Ara Nakuda. <clears throat> but it's so, it's so, so gratifying when you do. Right? It's so gratifying when you do. It's so empowering and gratifying when you can do that. Right? Is it true, Mordechai? Do you agree with that? It is true. Yeah. But sometimes I find that the Sitra Akra tries to get me to think that the, the other thing feels good too. Right, 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 right. Until, until the person does that thing. And then the Sitra says, ha ha. <laughs> Right, it makes you feel that it's good, just to fool the person. Right. Just to fool the person. The same way I told you, I'll tell you one more time. The, the perfect example, the Chavetz Chaim, the Chavetz Chaim said that there was a newsman in yeshiva, right? Newsman. And there were two, uh, there was a, what? a newsman, a new time, a new, a new oh, segment, oh, oh, oh. a new, a new, uh, a new uh, uh, a session, a new session. Yeah. Session, semester, yeah, semester, semester, perfect. A new semester. So they were, they, were, they were, you know, the boys, the boys in the yeshiva decided, one decided that he wants to learn and he wants to go through Gemara. He wants to see Shas. So he's just going to go through Bekiot. He's going to go through just to read through Shas and see the Rashi and, and just go through Shas. That was his idea. And the other boy, the other side of the base Medrash, he decided that, you know, I really want to understand what I'm learning. I want to understand it. I want to go through the Mepharsha. I want to understand the Ran and the Rif and the Rush and the Marsha. And, and I want to understand this. I want to see Rabbi Kiva Ega. I want to understand it. Iyun, yeah. Right? Iyun, Iyun. Yeah. I don't know any of those people you just mentioned. The, 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 these, were, these were the great rabbis and commentaries on the Gemara. Uh, okay? Different commentaries on the Gemara. So, so uh, 30 days into the, into the, the semester, the Eight Sahara comes to one guy. The first guy, and he says to him, he, see, he, he already did like 40 different blocks. He, he saw 40 pages. He went through 40 pages. Wow, great, okay. He says to him, do you even know what you learned? Do you have any idea what you're doing? You don't even understand. Well, what do you really understand? You see that guy in the corner over there? Look how he's learning. Look how he's learning Iyun. He's learning, he's studying. He's dissecting the study to really understand it. And what are you doing? You're just speed reading. He knocks him down. Then he goes to the other guy in the corner. He says, huh, you're studying here so good. You're, you're doing your Iyun. You're, you're studying so good. What did you accomplish? You're still on the first page. Look at the other guy over there. He did 40 pages. Look at the other guy over there. He just did 40 pages. And look at you. you did, you're on the first page. See how the eight zero works? Even when you're doing good things. Even when you're doing good things, right? Yeah. This guy really has a good intention. <laughs> he wants to go to an Ian, Bikias. And there's a, there's a, there, there is something, Rabbi Nachman said, that's very important to do Bikias. It's very, very important because yes. Bikir, when, you do, when you just read through things, to have knowledge, yeah. to gain knowledge. Quickly. You want to gain knowledge. What? Quickly. Yeah, you, you, you just want to go through material. You want to read through Tanakh. You want to read through Shulchan. You want to read through material. C- cover ground. Covering ground. Why? Because Rabbi Nachman said that in the next world, when you come to the next world, after 120 years, the only things that you can learn in the next world are things that you learned in this world. Right? In the next world, we only learn Torah. So if the guy only learned one page for eternity, he's going to be only learning one page. Right? And, but if the guy saw you know, all of Shas, and he saw all of Tanakh, he, he has a lot of information. He, 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 he a lot of nice things, right? He saw many as far. He went through <laughs> many, so he can study a lot of things. You understand? But where does it come from? It comes from this R and Akuda. I have to connect back, and just remember what was the R and Akuda? Is the kedusha sabris? Nakuda is always yisod. Yisod is the kedusha sabris. And we said one more time just to remind ourselves because it's very very important. 
when we we when was this, when we when a kodesh broke was had the shvirat akelim right he broke the kelim, so we said that the light from the kelim ended up in the in the uh, uh, in the yesod in the yesod in the yesod from atzilut, yeah. right? We said yesterday we we called it there were there were ten different yeah. boroughs in each neighborhood in each world, right? So the sixth ne- borough, right? That's what you said, Sasha, yesterday, right? You wanted to call it, I call them cities, he called it boroughs. We call it boroughs, okay. So the sixth borough was Yisod. That's where the light came. What's borough? A borough is a... a, 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 it's like a, 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 a district. A district, a district. Yeah, a district. Okay, okay, district, a borough, whatever you like. Okay, so it's the sixth sphere of the, of the ten. Each in each world, there's ten sphere. So it came to the Yisod. That's why in this world here, we have to be very careful with our yesod, with our bris, and and to not to have chas v'shalom pegama bris, damaging, uh, you know, sexual impurity. Why? Because then we can't connect to the yesod of the olam atzilut. That's where the light is. That's why it's so integral that we keep ourselves clean. So that way we can connect to the yesod. If our yesod is right, it connects to the other yesod. Right? It's like a lock, the combination, right? If you, if, you, if you keep it, right, you get the lock just right, then you can make the connection. It'll open, right? So if I want to open that light up on high, how am I going to get that light on high? By keeping myself pure. Tikkun akloli is bodhidut, right? And when I do that, when I keep myself pure, then I can tap into light. People want to know, why don't I feel the light? People will ask you, right? Why don't I feel the light? Right? I'm studying. I don't. I don't feel. Well, are you, uh, what are you doing about keeping yourself pure? You can't do what you want to do, you know, on the side, and then say, "Oh, now, now I want to uh, be connected to God." That's not going to work. It's a program. In other words, if you keep yourself pure, then you can connect to purity, right? But if a person, right, you understand? It's a whole package. It's a package, right? It's a package. Does it make sense? And this is what we're learning here from Tefillin. We're learning this whole thing about here. This, you know, this, I write on the Tefillin and I see the beauty, right? I see, I can see it when I write the letters. Right? The letters are actually very beautiful, right? The letters, are, they're, 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 they're so pristine, they're so beautiful. The letters on the, on the, on the cloth of the Sefer Torah is so beautiful. Okay, so let's go on. Uh, any questions? Or we, we, we got this understanding. We are in the Kuda. The are in the Kuda is that is the light from the Nakuda of Yisod of Atzilut. Every time the Rebbe is saying, that's what he's, he's referring to. Connecting to that light. Okay? Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Now, uh, we're up to Ki, uh, uh, Ki Aksav. Ki Aksav. Ki Aksav. Ki Aksav. Ki Alaklaf, because when you write the when you write the ksav and you write it on the cloth, right? You write it on the, the parchment, right? There lo- you have to have the lines, right? You have to have the lines etched into the parchment. You do it the right way, right? Did you see them, David? You saw there yeah. were there were lines etched into the parchment, yeah. right? And you have to write lines. right. There are lines. There are there are there are lines yeah. that are etched in. So you have to when you when you do that the right way and you follow the, the guidelines, so then you, you, and you write it on the cloth, that's the nekuda, that's the bechines Hashem me'ira le bechines shelamata. So there's, that's the light that comes down here. In other words, the Torah is up on high. It, it, Zaya, Zaya says that HaKadosh Baruch was mistakel by Raisa, u by Reyayla. Right? HaKadosh Baruch looked in the Torah on high, not the Torah we have down here. The Torah on high was tackled by Raisu by Reyayla. Right? So notice, when we write down here, when we write the Torah down here, we're connecting to the Torah up on high. Right? Does that make sense? The Zohar said that Hashem looked in the Torah, and through looking him looking into the Torah, he, he made all of creation. All of creation he created through looking in the Torah. A beautiful idea on Pesach is this, a beautiful idea. Maybe we'll bring something in on Pesach also. You know, how is Klal Yisrael, how are we different than all the other nations of the world, right? All the nations of the world celebrate their, their national holidays, right? They all have national holidays, right? France has a national holiday, America has their national holidays, right? England has national, every, every country has national holidays, correct? 
And we have our holidays, right? We have Pesach, we have Shavuot, we have Sukkot, right? What's the difference between our holidays and their holidays? Right? They celebrate holidays, we celebrate holidays, correct? What's the difference? The difference is this. The difference is this. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is mastakal by rights. He looked in the Torah to create the world. Hashem saw in his Torah that there's an idea, there's an idea of Yetziat Mitzrayim. There's an idea of Cheirut. There's an idea of freedom. There's an idea of going out of Mitzrayim, Meitzar Yam. There's an idea of Paroi, Pera. You understand? Paroi is Pera. Paroi, right? Pesach is Pesach, right? It's like a hybrid word, right? There's two words. Pe the mouth that now can speak. Right? Instead of pe ra, pa roi. Right? Pa roi is pe ra, bad mouth. Right? Pesach is the antidote to pa roi because it's pe sach. The mouth can now speak. You understand? Is it like that? Pa roi is pe ra, bad mouth. Right? Speaking bad, speaking ill. Right? There's no Hashem in the world. There's no Torah. He says, Mi Hashem. Right? Moshe Bena came to to to, 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 to uh, to, to Pare, and he says, uh, Hashem said, Who, who's Hashem? Right? He looked up in his book over there. There's no, uh, we don't know, Hashem's not listed as one of the gods in my book. He's not listed in my book. <laughs> right? Right? Okay. So now, so what happens? HaKadosh Baruch Hu then, listen to this. This is fascinating to understand this. HaKadosh Baruch Hu then created the world in order to allow for the Metzios for the possibility, he made the world in order to allow, to lend for the possibility of there to be a Mitzrayim, of there to be a Parai, of there to be an idea of Yitziat Mitzrayim, to get out of that mess, the idea of Kabbalah Satayra. So all of the things that transpired, all of those things that transpired were only to guide that Klai Yisrael should be in Mitzrayim, so we could be worked in Mitzrayim like the leather, like we're learning about the tefillin, right? We had to be worked on. We had to be worked on. The same way the leather is not so nice when it starts, right? But when you work on it, it becomes nice, right? By the Brisbane of Sarim, right? By Avram Avinu. Hashem said that your children are going to be in Mitzrayim for what? 400 Amen. years. Did Avram Avinu say anything? No. He said, okay, Hashem, okay. He came to Sidaim, Sidom and Amorah. How much did Avram Avinu have to say? A lot, a lot. 50, 40, 35, 30, 20, 10. But his own, his own children, his own children, 400 years are going to be enslaved. It's quiet. Quiet. You ever think of that? Do you ever think of that? Right, Mordechai, you know the story, right? Right, when it came to Sodom, right? Yeah. Right, he has a friend who says he's arguing with Hashem for a long Here he doesn't say anything. You know why? Because Avram Avinu understood what tefillin are. And Avram Avinu understood that we are the nation that has to be worked on. We have to work on ourselves. We have to be worked on. We have to be, we have to pl- cleanse ourselves. We have to purify ourselves. And the same way when we were in Mitzrayim, we weren't so, we didn't look so nice, right? Because we had all the problems of Mitzrayim. But the same way, when you look at leather in the process when it's being made, does it look nice? Doesn't look nice. Doesn't look nice. Doesn't look like something you'd want to deal with, right? Maybe that's how we looked when we were in Mitzrayim. But what was the point? But we came out of Mitzrayim, and we had this, we had this sphere of the 39, the, the 49 days to bring us to Kabbalah Satar. Then we became beautiful. That's the Aranakuda, right? We became beautiful, right? You understand how we, you understand this? So really, really, Pesach is really so much connected. You, you, you want to know why Pesach is connected to the tefillin, right? So that's why... No, it's, it's talking about it in here. In yeah, yeah, I, I understand. So we, we were talking about it before, yeah. so I figured I'll give you a little, an idea of, of how Pesach is connected to tefillin. Okay? Give me a minute. Okay. El Bechinas Shetachtav the Hainu Alev Chaveira. The same way, the same way we learned this concept before, that when when a, a, a tzaddik has to always be metzamtzim. Again, we said yesterday the tefillin have to be black, right? The tefillin have to be black. 
What's black? What's in, in our in our no no in our in, in us? What do we have that's black in our bodies? Black. No, no, the, the pupil, the pupil, pupil of the, of the eye. eye. The pupil of the eye is black also, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And remember when we learned about that? We have perif peripheral vision, mm -hmm. and then we can look straight at something, right? When we look straight at something, we're mitzam same. It. When you're mitzam same, then you could see it better, right? Mm -hmm. But if you have too much light, you can't see it. But if you if you if you if you're mitzam same the light, you're, you you constrict the light. And you guide the light, then you can see much better, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So this is what we're saying over here with the tzaddik. See, the tzaddik has a lot, a lot of information. The tzaddik knows a lot of things. He's connected. His mom is connected to the rabbi Nishla. His mom is connected to the tzar and the kudu all his life, right? But the tzaddik can't give over everything he has. He has to be with some same his information. He can't tell everybody what he really knows. He has to. He knows his audience. He knows his students. He knows the people he's in contact with. He sees their neshamot. He knows what they need, and he knows how to guide them in the way that that'll be beneficial to them, right? The same way. Do you understand? So that's what we're saying. And then we said that that really was connected to that melupim from the other day, right? The point that's the tzaddik and the vav is the people, right? We, which is guiding the people. But we also said that really that in each and every person, each day has the has the the the, the nekuda kedusha that comes to them of that day, and that's why it's so important to have a conversation with a good friend each day. Why? Because this way I can benefit from their nekuda from their nekuda kedusha from that day, and they can benefit from mine. You understand? You know, I can benefit from them; they can benefit from me. That's why it's so important. The same way, when you have a rabbi and a Talmud, right? The, the Talmud can benefit from the rabbi, and the rabbi benefits also because now he's helping the other person. It works both ways, right? The same when we give tzedakah, right? We think we think we're doing we, we think we're being so kind, and I gave the, the guy some money, right? Really, we have no idea what's going on. It's really he's helping us out way more than I'm helping him out, way way more. We have no idea, really, what's going on, right? That's why you have to, when you give the money, you're supposed to always give it, save upon him, your face, right? You give it in a nice way. You don't want to make the guy feel bad, right? Why? Because he's doing you the favor. You ever think of that, right? The, the guy, when the honey comes, he's doing you a favor, right? Tzedakah is tatzal mimavis, right? We don't, we don't know, right? Who knows what, what we're chayiv on, right? I give that money. I give that money and I do it in that way and I give it in the right way, I can, I can be saving my own life. I gave the guy 100 shekel, I gave him 200, I gave him 500 shekel, who knows? W would anyone give 500 shekel to save their lives? Do we ever think, of, did we ever think when I'm giving to duck, I'm doing that to save my own life? It's a different way to give to duck, right? It's a different way, right? We're so, not supposed to do it for our own benefit, I thought. We're not. We, you're, you're, you're doing it. You're doing it to help because it's a mitzvah to give tzedakah. But but could you imagine how much more tzedakah a person would give if he understood really what he's doing? Right. It has to do with your amuna. It has to do exactly. Yeah. Tzedakah is the only thing where Hashem said, "Test me on it. Test me on it. Give you money and watch. I'll give it back to you." Right. There's only one thing you can test Hashem on. That's tzedakah. You could test Hashem. The Torah says you could test Hashem by giving it to Doctor, and if he doesn't give you back your money, you can complain to Hashem. <laughs> How do you like that? Complain to Hashem. You can complain, and you have a valid complaint because the Torah says, right? Well, he didn't say when he give it back. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> ah, now you. There you go. There you go. There you go. He didn't say it would be immediate. <laughs> and that's that's like Rabbi Rabbi Chaim Kramer, my my dear Rebbe, because Alzheimer is in stock. He always says that you know that the, the, the Rebbe says if you come to to Uman and you get and you say the Tikkun Akloli and you give a proof to Tzedakah, he'll take you out of Gehenna, mm -hmm. right? He'll pull you out by the payas from the from Gehenna. But Rabbi Nachman never said when he's going to do it. <laughs> he never <laughs> said when, right? Is that you said you heard him say that, right? He never said when. If you give, if you help the Rebbe by giving money to VRI, if you help to print the Rebbe's farm and you do things, so then the Rebbe will feel compelled to help you sooner, right? Sooner, because if, right, you understand. Oh, Reuben, how are you? Oh, Hashem.
All right, now. That it's written that it, we learned the Lakutim around in, in lesson 100 and, and, uh, and uh, 92 that what? That the, that the Ksav that we write on the cloth, that we use the ink, the special ink, right? That special formulation of ink that we use to write on the cloth. That's like a, 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 a black fire. A black fire. <coughs> that's, the, that's the the ink, the ink that we use. Right, the Torah is a is a black fire on a white fire, right? You ever heard that before, right? Right. Okay. The Archaim Hakadosh has on Kabbalah Satora this idea. He speaks so much about the idea of the of the Eish, the 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 Eish Shechayra al Gabe Eish Levaina. Unbelievable the teaching. Maybe we'll do that another time. But this this concept. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's an idea of the Rav and the Talmud. The Rav is the black, is the like we said, the pupil of the eye, black. It's 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 right. Focus, it can focus, right? The pupil of the eye can focus, right? The Rebbe can focus, okay. And that's the Rav and the Talmud. The focus, okay. That's the Rav that they, they writes that that, that that that's the black fire. Shemashu bechinas shachros tahainu madrega tachtoina. That from the from the from the from the point of the Talmud, the Rebbe can seem black. What does that mean? The Rebbe can seem black. He's so bright, right? You ever see? If you ever you, if you ever driving right, and you come to and you and you come and, and when the, right right when the sun right before the sun sets, it's so strong, right? You ever see that? And the, the sun is blinding, right? But why, why is it blinding? It's, it's, it's so bright. Yeah, but too, too much brightness is actually blinding. It has a negative effect. Yeah, you want to say something, Ruben? Yeah, seeing that the sun being blinding. Yeah. I remember distinctly uh, taking my son Moishi to St. Louis. Okay. To go to Yeshiva. Yeah. And at that, it was later in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah. The whole sky was mamish red. Wow. I've never seen anything like it. It was unbelievable. Is that possible? Red? Yeah, okay. Yeah? It's possible. That's what you saw. So you, you're telling yeah. me it was red, so it was red. I'm not going to say no. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know your colors, right? Yeah. No, but, but the point we're saying here is, I'm just trying to show you what it means, that to the Talmud, the Rebbe seems almost too bright. So why it's too bright means because he's, he, he, he's too bright. Okay? Because of that high level, because the Rebbe is on such a high level, that's where the mind, the mind set, sets in. The whiteness, the whiteness, which is which is to the next level, the second level, which is the Talmud, which is lower than him. So any time. You're learning with somebody, you're talking to somebody. And that's why we say it's so integral each day. Because each person, when they speak, they have their Arha, the, 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 the Nakuda Kedosh of that day. That special feeling, each day. So when we, that special feeling to me is so bright, but to the, to the next person, he doesn't know it yet. So I can be Mitzam Samit and try to give it over to my feeling to the next person, to, 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 to constrict it. I can, I can, I can confine it. Yeah. I can confine it in a way that I can give it over that it can be beneficial. Uh-huh. Right? The same way we said that uh, you can have a great rabbi that has so much information. He knows so many things, but he has to know his student, and he has to know how to be constrict all his information to focus it on what he that person needs at that time. What he can understand. What he can uh, al pidarko. Right? That's what Chazal tells us. Teach the child in his way. You can't teach in one broad, general way. You could do it in a, in a, in a, in a unique way for each child. Right? That's what the Torah says, V'shinamtam levanecha v'dibarta bam. A father should teach that child. Why? Because the father knows his child way better than any Rebbe will know his child. Right? That's what the Torah says. There's thousands of years before student-centered education. Yeah. 
No, no, you're, you're right. You're absolutely right. And that's another thing Rabbi, Rabbi Kramer always says also, that it's a, it's a miracle. He said it's a miracle any time a, a, a Jewish child goes through the yeshiva system and he comes out from. He said it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a miracle. It's a miracle because, because you, again, you have that classroom with all of these students in there and you have this poor teacher that's standing in front of the classroom and he's trying to te- connect to all these students, but there are just so many. Well, Hashem, there are a lot of students. How is it possible for the rabbi to be able to touch each and every single person? But he really can if the, if the Rebbe asks for Siata Dishmai and he really wants to connect each one. So the Rebbe Shalom will give him the right words to say the right things, to touch each and every student. There are ways to do it. But unfortunately, that's not what's always done today. All right, so here we understand the concept, right? We have the Eish Levoina and the Eish Shechoira, right? We have the black fire and the white fire, right? The white fire, you, you, you can only see the black fire through the white fire. Right? Notice if you don't have the parchment, the white, you can't have the black. Right? Why and do you call parchment the uh, fire? Be, that's what, that's what the, the, the Zoya brings down, and, and our, our, our Chaim HaKadosh brings that down. This, this concept that the, 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 the Torah, the, the white part of the Torah is the white fire. The black letters are called the black fire. Right? There's a black fire on a white fire. Okay, that's, a, that's another, that's a, it's a concept. Okay, so it's a black fire on a white fire, okay? And again, really, really that we know all of the, the, all of the Torah are all Shemus of Hashem, right? They're all names of God. All of the words of the Torah, all names of God in, in different combinations, in different, uh, situ- different uh, uh, things. You know, we understand anyone that ever played Scrabble. You ever played Scrabble? Right? You know that game Scrabble, right? So what are you doing? You're taking all the letters and you're making all the words that you want to make, right? Because you have the letters. You have the letters, right? And that's what the, that's what the point of the lesson is, that you have the letters. And those letters are, are the tzaddik teaching over what, what the, the student needs. But you can only have, the, the, the Rebbe is only as good if he has his students, right? That we said the king, right? The king is only good if he has his constituents, right? Or else he's not a king, right? That, that's how we, okay. Is that Bechinas? Any, any questions on this concept? There's a lot of concepts here we're learning. Any questions? Any, you want, anyone want to uh, say anything? Uh, so we know that Please. there's one thing about the, the few Mekubalim yeah. in the end of the World War II. So the, they were asked to go to uh, Abir Yaakov by Egypt. Mm-hmm. And they went there, a group of Mekubalim, and they changed the letters. They changed the letters because uh, uh, the Nazis were about to go into Israel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they changed the letter from Syria to Russia. Yeah, they yeah. They changed the letters. And really? then, and that's what, what happened. The, the Nazis... By, yeah, yeah, by, that, that's a big in, miracle. What was his name? Syria, Who was that guy? Who was it? What was his name? Yeah. The, 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 the Russian the general. Uh, what uh, was the general? What was his name? Do you remember, Ali? The, the Nazi general. Ram, 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 right? Yeah. Yeah. He was he was marching this way, and they they they. And they didn't know how. The letters, the letters, the letters. We don't understand how powerful the letters are. We don't understand, right? Yeah. So he changed it from Syria to, to Russia. You know, I also read that we don't even understand yeah. what the white in between the letters are. Ah, because 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 that that's 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 really boundless. Yeah. The same way every Jew is really boundless, and every Jew has any, all the possibilities. So too is the white. So too is the white. It has the possibility because you can write anything on the white. Mm-hmm. Right. That's the that's the beauty of every Jew. Every Jew is so beautiful. He has all the possibilities. Right? That's like the white. That's the white fire. Because he, he has all the possibilities. And that's why the tefillin has to be write, written on the leather. It's something that you worked on. That you worked it. That's what we started the lesson today. That you worked it. It's not something that just comes nice. You snap your finger and it's nice. Why? Because that's the idea that we have to all always constantly be working on ourselves to improve ourselves, to better ourselves. Yeah, that's why the... Huh? You got the Right? I mean, okay. <laughs> Okay. Allah I think got I'm having a hard time connecting with all this. You what? I think I'm having a hard time connecting with all of this. Okay. I, mean, I was up early in the morning. And I said, why am I falling asleep? Is it because I got up early? Or is it because I'm so confronted by this because I don't understand it that well? He is so confronted. No, no. So, so when, you got up, when you got up early in the morning, 
this is something new for you, right? Rabbi Mordechai, doing that, right? So, so again, the, you know, the other side, he's telling you, okay, sir, uh, you know, uh, all these years you've been doing it this way. Who gives you the right to change this? You're part of my group. You're part of my camp. I'm not letting you out. <laughs> I'm not letting you out. You have a membership. He shows you your membership card. So you have a membership here, right? You have a membership. Where do you think you're going? <laughs> right? You understand? That's what he's doing. You in, you, Egypt, you, you, in Egypt. You're in Egypt. You know, you, you know, you, you know, you want, right? I'm, Mordecai, I'm just trying to explain to you, okay? No, I, I understand. So, so now you have to explain to him, I, excuse me, I, 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 I am, I'm giving you a cease and desist. I'm giving I'm you now a cease and desist. Yeah. That's it, I'm canceled. <laughs> no yeah. more money for you. Yeah, why do you think a cease and desist is, right? Right, the lawyers have that thing, right? Cease yeah, and yeah, desist, yeah. right? You can't come within restraining. the restraining order. order. That's it, leave me alone. Leave me alone. But that's and, what he's trying to I, do. And then when I heard something, you know, like I, because I remembered something about, you said like, I remembered about the, the white space. Yeah. You know, and that it, there's so much more there because we have so much more white space in between the letters in the Torah. Yeah. And then I woke up. And no, that's because there's so many more Jews than there are tzaddikim. <laughs> <laughs> right? Factorial. Yeah, no, 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 but that's how it is. But, 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 but we have to take that. No, but that's so empowering that we can. It's so empowering. It's so empowering that, that we have the ability, that we have the ability to make ourselves better. We can do it. It's not, it's not an easy task because, again, it's so great. It was, such, it was, so, it was so easy to do, then, you know, no pain, no gain, they say, right? Is that the, is that the, the membership thing, right? to this group was really easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there's no value to it. Right? There's no, there's no value to it. So that's why it was easy, right? Right? Okay. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, tr I'm just trying to help you understand. No, it. I appreciate it. I'm feeling more awake now. Okay. Oh, okay. Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. He heard that I canceled his membership. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Through the Aranakuda, those are the letters of the Ksav, the actual letters that are written down. Baal Kain, Haim, Shechoris, and therefore they're black because it's focused. The same way that Sadiq has to focus, the letters are black because it's the, like the pupil of my eye that we learned in another lesson, right? Lesson 30, right? Okay. Uh, okay, then that, those, are, those are the hints and the symptoms of what's going on. Those are the hints that the tzaddik knows and the, and the constriction that he knows how to do. That's what, that's what gives light. That's what illuminates the cloth. The black illuminates the, the cloth, the, the, white, the white fire, right? Because when you just have the white, it's not so interesting, right? It, it's just a white piece. It's, it's nothing. Right, but when you put when you put the black on it, now you see the beauty of the white. Yeah, you want please. Uh, question: Why do they have? Uh, I know simonim is not the right word on top of the letters in the sacred card. Why do they put that? in? You mean the tagim? The tagim, tagim. Yeah, yeah. the crown. So that that's all. That's all uh, very deep, deep stuff. Rabbi Akiva, the Gemara what says, Rabbi Akiva was darshaning the tagim. Really? Yeah, Rabbi Akiva was. And Moshe Rabbeinu was in Shemayim, and he asked Hashem, what's that? He yeah. says, yeah, 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 this is what the, <laughs> right? Gemara yeah? Yeah, Gemara Menachas, right? <laughs> and Moshe Rabbeinu says, he's teaching your Torah. Wow. Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu, Gemara Menachas, yeah, he's teaching your Torah. This is your Torah. Rabbi Akiva. When did Rabbi Akiva start? When he was 40 years old. Right, we have Torah today because of Rabbi Akiva, right? Right? Rabbi Kiva Rabbi, got the... It's, it's the same year. It's Rabbi Nathan and Rabbi Nachman. Yeah. Rabbi Nathan is the, the white uh, flame, but, but now he's, he's the black flame for us. <laughs> but it's, it... Of course, no, but of course, the, the tzaddik in the, in the Talmud is always like Yeshua with Moshe Rabbeinu, right? Yeah. yeah, Joshua and Moshe, right? Yeah. Joshua was the white fire, and Moshe Rabbeinu was the black fire. And it goes on. Right? And, and that's he, how... It, yeah, then it became a black and, fire when he came to... And, and they pass over the fire to the next one. Right, and that's how it works. Okay, so now, so the so the so the black is mayor the cloth, right? It's a, you see it, you see the beauty of the cloth. 
you see, and you could read something because there's letters there. When it's just white, there's any possibility, right? If you have a blank piece of paper, anything can be written on the paper, right? There's any possibility, right? You can write anything. A new imagination. Right, you could write anything. But once you wrote something, so then I can connect to what was actually written. Okay. Shehu Shehu Haya Mitchila. What? Bahamias. Before it was it was it was a uh, what was this what was the piece of cloth this this piece of parchment? It was part of an animal. It was Bahamias. It was it was a a, a, a piece of an animal. What was it? Bechinas Ahavas and the Fulais. We said that why do we make the why do we make the tefillin out of an animal? Why do we make it out of an animal? Because the animal has the desires and it has impulses, right? Impulses, right? An animal sees something, it wants it, it just goes for it. it the animal doesn't think. The animal doesn't think what's going to be my rep repercussion if I get this thing. He wants this thing, the animal goes for it, right? So, so the problem is that people sometimes act in that way also. Mm -hmm. They have an impulse. I want this thing, they go get it. They don't understand how damaging it is, right? So that's why the tefillin are, and, and that's what the, it's connected to the, to the shards, to the netzites of the world. These shards that are, uh, it's connected to a, a havas nefulis, fall in love, misplaced love. Let's put it like that. Misplaced love. That's what anim, that's what the animalism is. Animalism is a misplaced love. Bechinas ahavas and the fulas. That's ahavas and the fulas. Misplaced love. Va'achsha. But now, but now, through the letters, these black letters that are written on this, niskashe la'or and the kudav inasa kaidesh. Now it becomes something holy, right? Now it has a, a level of kedusha to it, right? Now you have to treat it in a certain way, right? Before the Tefer Torah that we did on, on Erev Shabbos, before it was finished, so it was, it, was a, it was holy, it was good, but it didn't have the Kedusha of the Sefer Torah. Once you finish the last letter, you write that last Lamed, Le'ne Kol Yisrael, you write that now it's a Sefer Torah. Whoa, <laughs> it takes on a whole, new, a whole new thing, right? It's a whole new thing. When you travel with it, how you have to do it? It has to be in Italian. To, it's, it's all, there's a lot of rules on it. It's not so, it's not so partial, because it's now a Sefer Torah. Tehainu. That it became holy at at, at tefillin, the tefillin shu mitzvah sheyesh begufa kedusha, the mitzvah itself in the kedush in the tefillin in its guf in its essence has intrinsic kedusha inside of it because of how it was worked on, and when they say the same the shame kedusha tefillin when they work on it we said they can't just think about it. Right, you can't think the when they when they when they're making the the, the boxes and they, or the ciphers writing the parchment. He has to constantly be saying l'shem kedusha tefillin. Why? Because then he creates the vessels. The words create the vessels to bring the light into it. Right? Do we, if you don't, yes. Does he say it every day or just in the beginning? No, he say it multiple times. Multiple times. Uh huh. So each day he says it. Oh, he'll say it multiple times in each time when yeah. he's working. Yeah. Each sure. word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each word of Hashem, no? Yeah, 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 yeah. Each letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's unbelievable, really, if you think about it. Because again, you're creating the vessel, you're creating the vessel so the light can form into the vessel. See, that's why I need to find the sofa. Okay. Vika Kedusha, and the main holiness is Ayadeya Oisei Saksav through the letters that were actually written. That's the way the Kedusha comes from. Because before you write anything on the 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 the, 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 uh, the uh, what do you call it the the parshias of the tefillin right you have the little pieces of parchment that they write the before you write anything on it well, it doesn't have any it doesn't have any value to it there's no kedusha in, in the in the actual thing yeah maybe there's it, it has the kedusha where where it has the it was made in a certain way so it has the possibility to be able to be used but it doesn't have it a, 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 a what do you call it a, a level of holiness from itself by itself. Right, there's a difference once you put the once you put the letters on there. Uh, can we finish this? Thing? Let's see here. Yeah, let's try to finish. Let's try to finish uh, uh, Gimel, okay? And tomorrow, Mitzvah Shem, we're going to do a special. We have a special project. We're going to do the the uh, the mimer from the Arizal from Rav Shamchen Ashrapolia to learn on Erev Pesach. That's a, an amazing, amazing thing. 
Really, it's an amazing, uh, we'll see tomorrow. So let's try to finish Gimel, so we'll leave it. So we'll, it's not Lakut HaLachot? No, we're not going to do Lakut HaLachot. Bring your Haggadah tomorrow. Okay. There's a special Indian Which to learn. No, uh, okay, we'll talk about it after. Okay, Bechlala Parshish. Bechlala Parshish. So we're talking about which Parshish now? We're talking about the Parshish of the Tefillin. Bechlala, in, in general, Heim Bechinas Moichin. The Tzrichim, they need to be Mitzamsim. It's the, the whole idea of the Parshish is something of Moyach. There's a lot, there's a lot of this. It's so, it's so powerful. The Parshish themselves are very, very powerful. Because again, we said that we wrote the light, we, the light, the black fire on the parchment, now it becomes very, very potent. Very, very potent. And therefore, what we have to do, legoiznan bebatim. Therefore, we put them in the, the housing. Now, as you don't take your, your tefillin, are, the, the parshas aren't written around it. No. We said around the, around the tefillin, around the tefillin, we have that shin of the four prongs and the shin of the three prongs. We said that was the seven. Remember we learned that, right? Mm-hmm. We, was, we studied that last week, right? And we said the four connect, the four batim, the four connections are connected to the to the to the Kayan Gadol's uh, vestments that he went into the Kaidish Kedashim, his white vestments, mm-hmm. and then also connected to the four cups of wine on the Seder. See that? You want to know why you're twilling are connected to Pesach, right? Mordechai, so here you go. The four <laughs> connections are connected to the four, I understand, yeah. connected to the four cups of wine. Isn't that amazing? Unbelievable. Okay, so now you put them inside the bottom. You put them inside the housing. Lekabel oiram the bechinas kamet simsumim. So now I can be makabel the or I can accept that light of these parshias, but through the constriction, the bias, the the the, the housing of the tefillin, the black box, is the is what's constricting that light. So it can I can accept the light in a way that it'll be beneficial to me. You understand? In other words, I can't. I don't keep the parshas displayed. I don't display the parsha. The parsha is put inside because they're so powerful. They're so potent. Therefore, they're so, they, therefore, they have to be inside the box. They have to be inside the box so that way it can be constricted. The same way we said that the tzaddik, the nakuda, the are nakuda has so much information, but he has to constrict what he gives over to the students because if not, he, he, he the student won't be able to accept it if it's too powerful. He won't be like we said when the sun is too bright, right? You can't, it, you, it, it's blinding, right? So to hear these parshas are so bright, we put them inside the, the housing in order to constrict the light, not to const- for the sake of constriction, for the sake that I can benefit by it. You understand? We're not trying to constrict it for the sake of constricting it. We're doing it for our benefit. Benefit of the, uh, of the of person. Of Shacharit. During the, 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 yeah, the yeah, 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 Shacharit, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and Misham, from there, Mikablin or and Akuda Bechinas, the Yud. I can, can, can connect to the Yud, right? Some people have a Yud on the back of the, of the Tzvillim Shal Rosh, and they have a Yud on, or some have a Dalit, with Dalit is really a Yud. Okay, we'll talk about that, right? And they have on the, on the, on the, uh, on the, the bias from the, from the Shal Yad, you also have that little knot, that little knot is in the shape of a Yud, Right? Okay, Vizer Bechinas Hasoroisha Maitsiya Minatfilin. Oh, this is an interesting one. We use the little hairs, right? If you look at your the Atfilin Shell Rice, right? You have those little hairs sticking out of the top. The, the cipher didn't make a mistake. You know, sometimes someone I was once talking to someone and they said, I think I'm gonna tri- trim these here. They yeah. didn't No, they thought they made a mistake, yeah. you know, like you know, when the ta- the tailor, you know, yeah. when they finished, they had to cut the, the, the pieces. So he thought he made a mistake. He was sewing, he left the thing stick. No, people don't know, Ellie. People don't know. They don't know. No, he meant it in a good way. He meant it in a good way. He said it doesn't look finished. <laughs> no, so here I have the I have the, the Sa'aris sticking out. Those are the little antennas. Those are the little antennas that I can connect to that light. You'll see. One second. It, this is so beautiful. Look. So the light goes out. The noise. I put the I put the the, the parashias inside the box, right inside the box. But I, and I but now if they're concealed totally in the box, I don't have any connection to them. So what happens? We take a little bit of that the, the, the hairs from the from the um, 
from the snooze, what do you call it in English? The 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 sorrow, the, the yeah, sinus, 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 right? Mm-hmm. Where you take that and it sticks out. So those hairs that are sticking out are the little antennas that they're connecting back to the light to bring it into me. I mean, it wasn't a mistake. No, Adarabha, it's integral. Wow. Remember the cars used to have antennas on them? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Right, right? Without the antenna, the radio wouldn't work, right? Yeah. <laughs> you take off the antenna, it won't work. How did, what do they do today? They put the antenna on the way they put it. It's internal. It's in the window or something, right? They put it inside, right, right? <laughs> you see, everything's a muscle for the nimshal. I try to always try to find a, 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 a connection. You know, if you want it to work, you want the radio to work, you have to have an antenna or else it's not going to work, right? So to here, yeah, I need these little hairs to stick out of the villain to be my antenna to benefit by the light that I constricted, that I was, that was constricted, but I still need something. And that's the thing, the same way that Sadiq constricts, the same way this, all of the things, it's all, it's all one, one, one idea. Make sense? Good? Okay, let's see now. There were just a few more lines. Uh, now, when the tefillin start out, they come from a very high place, like we said, the, the, the tefillin is so powerful. They go out again in this idea, to me, they connect to me in the idea of those little hairs, the little hairs, that's what that I can connect to. Uh, uh, I can't get that light down here. In other words, I can't get it. It's only with those little hairs. That's what I. That's what I. That's my connection. That's my connection. Now, because that kriyas aparshias besaros shall be. Now, okay. So, so now, when they, I don't know if anyone ever saw this. When they take the tefillin shall roish, right? So they take the parsha and they fold the parsha. It's a special way they fold it, and then they tie it. They tie the parsha with a a, a a piece of sinews again, with a little with hair sticking out of that one. Each one of those have its hair sticking out of each one, and then they put it in each respective box. We'll discuss which parshas are where. We're going to learn about that. What's the difference between Rashi Tzil and Rabbeinu Tam? How the parshas are switched and all of that. And and you could tell. By the way, you could tell on the on a on a Rashi Rabbeinu Tam Tzil and where the parshas are. Which ones Rabbeinu Tam? Based on where the hairs are sticking out. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to learn. So the, so that's so again. You see the idea again when you take the parshas, you fold them. Again, why we fold them? Because they're so powerful. So I fold them. I sort of say close the book a little bit, but I want something sticking out. And that's why the hairs, when they're tying it, those hairs sticking out. So the hairs that are tied, uh, each parsha that goes in each respective compartment of the, of the, uh, of the bias of the rosh, right? There's four, there's four compartments in there, right? When you look at the outside, you can see there's four compartments, but there's actually carved out in the, in the inside, when you, if you open up the tefillin, there's actually cloth, and they put the, the, the parsha eat in each in each one of those carvings, in each one of those compartments. But each parsha is also tied. It's also tied. You know, so you can't use a piece of scotch tape. It won't work. Right? Or a rubber band, right? You want to use the snitch because that's something, a min of the of the way the tefillin are, were, were made. It goes back to the same thing with the lul of an esrig, right? When you tie your lul of an esrig, you use it from one of the minim, right? You use a palm branch because you want to, you don't want to take another min and mess up the, the situation, right? Any questions? Any comments? Why don't we want the power of the uh, the shemaya to be open? Why do we close it? I don't because it's too, if it's because it's too bright, it's too potent. Too you won't you won't you won't well, be able I'll to benefit up. by it. No, no, you're not going to blow up, but you don't know. No, 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 Mordecai, you'll be too bright. You'll be too much light. You won't be able to benefit by it. The same way when the sun is too strong, you can't benefit by it. So too, and if the light is too bright, you won't be able to benefit from the, from the tefillin. All the rods and cones are just the overwhelming. You what? All the rods and cones. Are unbelievable, the unbelievable. We couldn't, we wouldn't be able to do it. What's that there? The rods and cones, the mechanism in your eye that allows you to see when it's you have a huge flash of light, they just become, it, it, they all fire. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Unbelievable. So, yeah. This is... Uh,